this is our monthly mentoring program, Time with the Captain. So we have a very wonderful audience here. I'm going to tell you about them as we go on. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. <laughs> wonderful. These are students of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, and they are here for our monthly mentoring program. As always, this is Time with the Captains, and my name is Alfred Akansi. I'm going to be unveiling our captain for the month of February. Stephen Eko is the Chief Executive Officer of Emigo Ghana Limited, Accra, makers of Yomi Yogurt, and he has the objective primarily um, with his career goal is to become a highly successful industrialist in the food sector. He started this from 2005 to date. How many of you do not know about Yomi Yogurt? Now, before assuming this particular position as CEO, he was the field force manager of Dispo Farm, Switzerland, and Midview, Ghana, also with the primary job purpose of market products by managing staff, maintaining response operations, and maintaining quality uh, ratings as well. And before that, running through his career profile over the period, he has also been a marketing pharmacist with the Unichem Pharmaceuticals here in Accra as well. With respect to education, it is extremely important beyond his entrepreneurial skills. Uh, he has also uh, gotten a mini MBA from Stanford Institute of Innovation, the SEED, and an MBA in Global Business and Sustainability, Social Entrepreneurship as well, and as in B Farm, University of Science and Technology in Kumasi. He has his A level in St. Augustine's College, Cape Coast Central Region, here in Ghana in 1996, O level with St. Mary's Secondary School, Takrade. Western region. It's one of those days that you would have men go to girls' school. You know, he's one of those people um, as well. And he has primary interest uh, in motivational speaking and reading. And that's exactly what he's here to do to motivate the next generation to dare to dream and to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be upstanding and with a standing ovation, put your hands together as we welcome Stephen Echo. Who is our captain for the month of February? Good to see you. Thank Welcome. You. Thank Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can sit down. Now, I'm really excited about Stephen. You know why? Because five years ago, I think, we interviewed him as a startup. And today, he's a captain of this industry. Isn't it wonderful? Put your hands together for him. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Steve, Absolutely. you know, there are a few things I know about you, but beyond what we have said, what, wh who is Steven? And uh, tell us, I mean, wh wh what football team do you like? I hope it's not us now, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and Kotoko as well, these days you are not doing too well. So just tell us, I mean, who is Steve beyond what we know? Ah, thank you. Um, um, thank you for having me, and I'm excited being here once again. I appreciate this uh, opportunity to share my, my experience with you guys. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Steven, really, I mean, I don't have a football team. I don't, I don't, don't support, like no. I just play football for keeping fit. But you want to save your heart and emotions. <laughs> I do some taekwondo anyway, if you want taekwondo. to do. That's fine. Wow. But basically, um, like he rightly said, uh, I am a pharmacist by profession. I'm married with three kids. Um, and have a beautiful wife who was part of this journey right from day one. Nice. Uh, I mean, I believe in God. And basically, if you want to know other things about me, with time I will, I will unveil them. But I mean, really, I'm just a very simple person. You know about me. Simple person. <laughs> simple. <laughs> yes. But how, how, how was life for you growing up? I mean, what I want to do is just to delineate what you are now. Okay. And where you were or okay. where you're coming from. Okay. Let's understand those struggles, okay. um, those challenges and tests that you had to overcome. Thank you. I, I like sharing my story because I'm always excited and motivated the more when I share my story with people. I mean, I grew up in a small village in Koforidia uh, called Nye. Now it's called Two Streams of Something. I mean, um, I went to technical school. And when I finished technical school, I realized that I wouldn't be able to achieve my dream. I like those times, I like, I like putting on tie like you do. Mm. It's beautiful. I wanted yeah. to be a medical doctor. 
And I realized you could not go through the technical school to get to university. You cannot be a medical doctor. So I had to go through a lot of struggles, write the A levels on my own, and then eventually I managed to get um, um, admission to St. Augustine's, one of the best schools anyway. You realize we, we, we won the... <laughs> so, I mean... I, I don't want to talk much. <laughs> So from yeah. there, um, I got admission to to um, university to read um, um, pharmacy, and the journey started from there. I can mm. tell you on and on. It's been 15 years now when I started business. So with time, I will tell you how it started and where we are now and the challenges and, and all that. So after after graduation, you worked a bit as a pharmacist. Yep. Right. So at what point? How many years did you work? I mean, after graduation. Okay. So. If I, st when I got to tech, I will tell you how I, I'm a pharmacy, but mm. now I'm into food and nutrition. Yeah. I will tell you how I entered into that. Um, but after graduation, I worked for like three years. Yes, four years, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. I, I wanted to establish that because, you know, sometimes as entrepreneurs yep. or people, startups, the, the, there is that passion, but yeah. you need the experience as well, yeah. you know, on, on the job. And that's why I asked how many years you worked and how that impacted on, on you when you decided to start your own business? Um, yes, you need experience because you're going to manage people. So yes. you need experience. But sometimes you don't need experience. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've not been to the food industry. I've not worked as a, in the manufacturing business. But I was just doing what I thought was interesting. And then it turned out to be, to be business. Let me tell you how this whole journey started. Tell me. When I went to tech, when I went to tech, mm -hmm. yeah, let me have to yeah, so Sorry. You can talk about it, but as, as, uh, if you just joined us, this is time with the captains for the yeah. month of February. And our captain for this month is Stephen Eko, who's the CEO of Yomi Yogurt. We, we just want to understand his journey, how far he has uh, come, the challenges that he has had to surmount, and some of the life lessons and principles that we can be able to take out of that. And that's what we've been talking about over the period. So stay with us as, as we do this. Steve, you're going to get into the period that you transited yeah. and, and how that worked for you. Yeah. So when I got to tech, um, I was given, uh, I was, okay, they, I wanted to be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And so I, I chose uh, medicine, but I, I was not offered medicine. They offered me chemistry. And those times, you don't get proper career guidance. And so right. We all thought that when you read chemistry, when you come back, you don't have that many industries. So all you have to do is to teach. And I didn't want to teach. <laughs> so, Why? I mean, that's another story. I mean, I'm not good at teaching. I mean, now. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't want to teach. And I changed my course to read pharmacy. So in the course of my study, that is where these, all these ideas occurred to me. Right. One, this, actually, this idea occurred to me um, on campus. There's a, there's a mini on a Greek setup that they used to teach the Greek students how to milk cows, how to make cheese, how to... This is at KNUSD? This is at KNUSD. Okay. So it's like that Greek department. Mm. And so when they do that, they, have, they sell some to the students, and we call it fresh yogurt. I mean, that's what they do. And I like it. I mean, those times from Accra going, back, going to Kumasi, USD, I've never seen yogurt which is, which is liquid. It's always frozen, and we buy it on the street and stuff like that. So mm. it was interesting. But something happened one day. I was going to write exams, my mid-semester exams. And um, I wanted to buy some of this drink before I go. And those times, it was not packaged in bottles or, or cups. This is what we call penny de penny. There's a cup. Hmm. Somebody will have to drink and finish. Oh, and yeah. then they wash it and they serve you. How many of you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so you have to be in a line. You, then you get your, your yogurt and boxes on donut and, and I nearly missed my mid semester exams. And I was like, wow, these guys, why can't they just package this thing so that as soon as you get here, you just grab and go? Mm -hmm. And that was the Eureka moment. So I told myself that when I finish school, I'm going to come to Kumasi, take this product to Accra. I wasn't thinking to produce it. Right. Just go to Accra and sell it in Accra. So the principle there is you identify the need yeah. of packaging. Yeah. And that's what you zoomed in on exactly. to, to start this. Exactly. So that, that's one thing I want us to keep in mind, right? So yes, somebody might be doing something and if you identify and you can add more value to it, you can also create a business out of it, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And so 
you see, because I have that idea now, opportunities became, became a bit clearer when you see them. If you want, just like you want to buy a car today, mm -hmm. uh, you begin to see new cars and different models and stuff like yeah. that. So we, in, in pharmacy, we have a lot of subjects here, but there's one subject we call pharmaceutics, and that is drug preparations. Okay. So our lecturer was teaching us one day and said, look, uh, it, and basically is how to mix water and oil or fat that it wouldn't separate. And so he made mention of yogurt as everyday example, mm -hmm. I mean, and some other products. I said, wow, this is interesting. And so that was another time I realized that I could really do this if I finished or complete school. I call my partner now, now my wife and partner, uh, she was my girlfriend. I mean, she was my girlfriend <laughs> when I was in, in so, tech. So that's strategic alignment. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, you have to get the same I stayed, I stayed, but I was honest. Eh? I stayed with her for five years and, and six years I married her. We, wow. are still, we, are, we have beautiful kids now. Nice. I think you deserve an applause. <laughs> 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 Anyway, and so I called her and said, I've seen this product on, on campus. She's in Accra and was in Accra and we're right. still in Accra. I've seen this on campus and they call it yogurt. It's nice, uh, but I think we can do something. But she's a caterer by profession and also a hotelier. Say, yeah, I know how to do this, but there's something in there, some scientific term stuff. I don't know how mm. we can get it. I mm. said, okay, leave that part to me yeah. and you do the rest. I mean, to cut a long <laughs> story short, I completed my pharmacy. Uh, I came back to Accra, and she wanted to do, do some what we call check check. So I had a small oh, check check yeah. joint by the roadside. And uh, the yogurt. It's still called check check. I don't think it has changed. It's what? Boys, boys. 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 Why not girls, girls? I mean, but you do the food anyway. Yeah. So yeah. And so she has this small restaurant, and yeah, she has the yogurt as one of the items on the menu. But okay. we observe an interesting trend. People come there, they buy the yogurt, and they don't buy the product and the, the rice. Oh. So why not reorient and just concentrate on this? And so, like Riley said, I was a pharmacy. I was a medical delegate. And basically what I do is that I take my car, I go to hospitals, and I try to sell my drug. I mean, I make presentation on my drug to doctors, to nurses, and pharmacists and I convince them why they should prescribe my drug other than other, other drugs. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going to do this, I, I, I pack a, a, a couple into my car, and then and I, I, sell it, I, mean, I show it to people, and it turned out. So I was doing this for like two years. I mean, sometimes so you, you have to take So you're giving free samples? Time. Yes. Because we mm -hmm. didn't know how it would turn out, so we, we took our time to see that this is going to be a great business. Right. That's eventually when I quit and I, I, I joined her and we started doing this whole business. Fantastic. So um, the initial sacrifice is important where because you want people to know about your product, you obviously would have to make sacrifices, give out some for free, yeah. let people appreciate what yeah. you're doing yeah. and be able to take it up from that, there. I that, think it's, uh, that's very true because when I finish school, I, it's difficult. My thing is that I cannot buy a car. I need a car, I need a house. And the kind of job I got being a medical rep, you're going to give you a car, nice car, and you're going to have an apartment. So it was, was my motivation. Now to leave this job, I will lose my car, I will lose my apartment. But at, at a point in time, I realized this is going to go. And so why not just join and nurture your own baby right from day one? And that's exactly what I did. I'm going to go for a quick break. When I come back, I'll find out how difficult it was for you to leave a well-paying job, your house, your car, and start a business. I'll be back shortly after this quick break. Stay with us. Welcome once again, quickly, from that quick break um, to Steve Eku, who is our captain for the month of February. He's been sharing some amazing life lessons with us, together with the audience here from the Ghana Institute of Journalism. This has been amazing so far. And for those of you, thousands of you who are watching us at home, across the world, on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, DSTV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Mr. Eku, you, before we went for the break, you were going to make that point about how difficult it was for you to leave a well-paying job and start your business. How difficult was that for you? Yes, like, like I rightly said, you know, <laughs> um, nobody can take care of a baby for you. Sometimes we want to be doing your business and start your own thing mm -hmm. and be sure that what you've started is doing well before you leave the mainstream job. I mean, 
your baby can only be taken care of when he's actually a child or grown up. So I realized that I have to leave, struggle a bit, and then build my own business because I saw the opportunity. It was tough, like I told you. I was driving a good car. Mm -hmm. I have an apartment from my employer. But now we have to go and, and start all over. But I saw the opportunity. I saw so you the saw process. the opportunity. I realized that it's going to grow. I mm -hmm. wouldn't have just risked anyhow. But I started it somehow, side by side. It may vary from individuals. But for me, I was still working as a medical rep. And I realized this is a great opportunity. Why not just grab it and, 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 and move on? So there was a market for the product. Sure. And that's what convinced you that you can actually do this. Exactly. But did you consider that the risk involved? How did that did that scare you or spare you on? <laughs> I mean, life is a messy, messy of risk. Even when you're eating, you can just, you can, something can happen to you. So it's just, it's up to you to weigh the risks and see, hey. And, and to be honest, the, fa the profession I belong to, I know I can easily find another job. I mean, right. when, when so you're there was farmers, always a plan B. Yes, there was a plan B. If I tried, it's not working, I can just jump on. I mean, we're, we're, pharmacies are hot cakes, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. that's what actually encouraged me. Now, let me try. If it's not working, I go back to, to what I, I used to do. I see. I'm going to go to the audience now and take some questions. You put up your hand. The microphone will be passed on to you. You ask your question as brief and straightforward as possible, and we get some answers to this. I see the first person over there yes who's that yes right mention your name and um yes please go ahead okay question. my name is abigail asempa from gij abigail asida asempa asempa yes please right on. okay mr ku please i want to know the thing that actually motivates you to leave your well-paid job to start your own business because before you leave a well-paid business like your Pharmacies, mm -hmm. they give you a car and apartment. Right. You just leave it to start your own business. I want to know what actually motivates you so that means one day I can take that you booster. One day you can leave your job as a <laughs> yes, journalist. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Go and pursue your business. Yes, please. Anyway, all right. So, um, are we taking the second, the second question? Okay, the lady, please pass the microphone on. And then there's one behind. I'll take another one from here. Yes. Okay, so my name is Frida Santua. Um, Mr. Ku, please, um, were there any, um, or did they get to any point in time where you felt like you should just give up the whole dream about everything? Like maybe you lost faith or something? Okay, so let's tackle these two questions. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, motivation. I mean, I can tell you what really motivated me. Uh, when we started this whole business, because I'm a pharmacist, Kolibu accepted our product. So the only place we got um, first retailer was Kolibu, the service canteen. Mm. And we have our numbers on it. And people were calling us around 1 a.m., 12, I mean, and 2 a.m. Like, hey, we bought this product from Kolibu, and it's really good. Why can't we get something to buy? And, and so you are like you're doing something that people accept it. It was it was so there was a market for it. There was market. The demand was yes, there. Yes. But I mean, we started very small from the kitchen to a small. If I'm doing a presentation, but I've seen all those structures very very small. Mm -hmm. And even from this small little corner, people call from so many places from Takradi because they come to Kolibu from Kumasi and other places. And we're like, oh, we bought this product was good. It was more like satisfying. And again, I tell you, people are motivated. Uh, but so many different things. I mean, but we, we started seeing money also coming. That was another good set, you know, mm. motivation. You cannot be doing something and uh, people say, I do it for, no, we do it for, for whatever reason. But the money also is important. But when we started, we're getting that satisfaction that you have a great product was good and the money started coming. And I tell you, in two years when we started that business, we built our first house. Just the In two years? Of, yes. You built your first house in two years yes. from selling yogurt? Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. But the truth again is that we con we've converted that house to a factory. We thought that it was going to be a small business, that is big business. We've now built another big factory that is West world class standard and that will move, eventually move into that. How did credibility as a principal um, 
help you in growing your business? Because at that point, obviously you get orders and all of that. How did that principle of credibility, goodwill, integrity help you in growing the business? I mean, these are fine values. When it gets to certain stages, it's difficult. I mean, you, you go to places and, I mean, we live in Ghana. And so it's, it's a good principle to stand for or to live with. But you get to places that sometimes you are like, hey, I, I can tell you a story. I went somewhere to go look for money. I got, I got, I got to the place. Uh, we talk about big, big monies. And then I leave the guy's office. Now, he came out to see me off. And he realized I was using some taxi. And well, I, after that, when I called, this guy wouldn't answer me anymore. Because you were using a but taxi? But that is who I am. I didn't have a car. I have to use. So I, I stayed true to myself. Mm. And these things pay way to, to, to uh, other things. So that, that is how come we manage. We were just truthful to ourselves and we live the life we have to live. Stay true to yourself. I mean, you, you will be amazed that as I sit here still, I even done, because we've converted a factory, our house to a factory, and we built another factory, I'm still renting an apartment. Will you believe that? I'm sure somebody will ask me how many workers we have in our revenue. I will tell you all, oh, but I mean, it's a big business we're running. So how many workers do you have? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, permanent workers, we have 77. 77? Wow. Yes. Wow. But we have some uh, temporary workers. Uh, part so the direct and indirect jobs. Yeah. Yeah. The direct jobs are 77. Exactly, yeah. And the others yeah. could be more. Yeah. Interesting. The second question was about, um, sorry, please remind me. What was the second question? Please, I was like, um, they, did they get to any point in time where you felt like giving up the you whole dream? Like up. It has happened several, and even as I said today, it's, it's, it, I'm sure tomorrow something will come up and you think that you want to give up. I mean, I realized when we were doing the business, what, what I can say is that I wanted a bit of safety. So I was working as a pharmacist. My wife was then doing this, my partner, when we were in the office, I call it my partner, was doing the business in the house and I take and sell. So I use my salary and at the point we go and buy all the materials, something like, yogurt is a very delicate thing to, to handle. And you use all your monthly salary and everything just go bad. You're like, hey, I mean, and you just have to fall on friends. That is not the only time. I mean, so many times that probably wanted, I can even share other stories where you wanted machines to buy and your money is locked up with somebody or, some, or something, somebody tried to, what do you call it, 419 or whatever. Yeah. All these things have happened. Dupe you. Yeah, I mean, and you supply a whole track load of yogurt to somebody, the next day you go and, and the shop is closed and the person don't want it. Wow. <laughs> so, so many things happened. So you are like, hey, it has happened, and I'm sure tomorrow or tomorrow next, it will still occur to me that, hey, but maybe where I've gotten to, I don't think I'll return. I mean, we will just... You have all now. the confidence to yes. go all out. Yes. Make it happen. Yeah. I see. Um, any more questions? Yes, I saw that. Let's go to the side, please. Who has the microphone? Please go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Hammond Raphael Nichwebi, University of Ghana, Accra City Campus. Oh. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Iku, I was reading about you before I sat... Um, in this in this place yes okay. and i got to know that you love mentoring it's usually when we get in touch with um, public officials and what have you they tell us they love mentoring we read about them they love mentoring but it becomes like hot air after a while because we don't get in touch with these people anytime we try getting closer they are busy they are so i want to know how we can get in touch with you as youth so that you can mentor us as well accessibility okay so, all right so i tell you what i like i like to do exercise, and I climb the Ebree Mountain every Saturday and start so Sunday. Somebody can just come. I have I have three Which guys, three guys that I mentor right now, and they will know that they can get me when we climb the mountain. So that's how you can get My me. Brother. I mean, <laughs> that's one of the ways you climb can get the me. mountain. I mean, okay. Um, we are business people, and so we share our time with business, with family, and with friends as well. So, yes, it's true we want to mentor, but the time is also important. Sure. And you can find times, if you know where I go to church, you can decide to fellowship with me that day and we, sit, we talk. And so we can have a creative way to create time. And, then we, and these days that we have technology, WhatsApp is there, we can always send 
messages left, right, center, sent emails, and we can take it from there. I, th I think it's a very, very critical point that you made. You know, sometimes we have this notion that you need to go to the person's office, meet the person, you know, in an office setting. No. I think that at this point, we should really take it home, drum it down, down, and let's apply it. If you get to know the person's leisure time, it's what the person does during leisure hours, and that's why I read the hobbies. If you know now, you can meet him on the mountain. Look, even if you don't want to climb, just go and, and, and be there. You know, they say that some of the very great conversations are had over tea or over lunch. Get to know someone. And, and that's going to work out for you. I think this is a really, really good one. Thank you so much. Yes. Hello. My name is Fauzu Masaudu from the Ghana Institute of Journalism. Since we are talking about time, and I'll build my question on it. As a business, an authority in the space of business, um, what is the strategic effort you would recommend to business owners who want to run a conglomerate? And so, for instance, you have a single business model, and you want to glue it into a conglomerate. What Fousy. time frame? Conglomerate. We, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's just a group of businesses, businesses. a group of you know, different forms of business under one umbrella. Exactly. Okay, so Media General is a conglomerate, okay, because we have 3FM, TV3, Onya FM, Connect FM, Akuma FM, 3news.com, Adesawe Productions. Please, help us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay. yeah, so, so what, how do we what, grow the business? Yeah, how do you do that? And also, <laughs> secondly, um, when you had the inspiration to get into um, the production of yogurt, and I'm sure we all know there is a certain popular yogurt brand already existing before you came into the market. Right. Were you at any point in time intimidated or um, scared as to how monopolized, in a way, they had to market um, taking over the space of yogurt Fantastic. production? Okay. Great point. Thank great, you. Great question. I mean, on the first point, I have a ph philosophy in life that nobody can grow beyond mediocrity if you don't use other people's money and other people's brain. Can you repeat that for me again? <laughs> I mean, you cannot grow beyond mediocrity if you don't use other people's money and other people's brain. I mean, other I, people's and money yes. and other people's brain. And I borrowed this from Napoleon Hill. I like to listen to some of these guys. Um, OPB and OPM and so if you are very good at doing something you, you can be at one place at a time you need to use other people just that you, can, you should also remember that you are not the only people at the shore and, and so you, you have to find a way um, to get other people involved because you want to run businesses at different places you cannot be at those places at the same time so you need to find a way, a model that will work getting other people in, involved. I don't know if I've been able to answer you. But with the second question, I also believe in one thing, focus and concentration. I mean, when we entered the market, we knew they were there. I mean, I, but we realized that they have a niche. I mean, they are doing something which is a bit different, price point different, even the package form and the format is also different. I mean, because we're uncertain, we don't want to be mentioning names. But we, we just concentrated on what we focused on, what we wanted to do, and we did it for a very long, I mean, at a point, they introduced similar product, but we still focused, and, and we, are, we are in business. Nothing has happened to it. We just grew organically, slowly, and we, we are where we are now. So I believe in focus and concentration. <laughs> like, people will say, we've been doing this for so many years now, and we, we've not added any other product. It's because we think that we've, we've not arrived here. We, we can do it better. And when we're at the point where we've, we have perfected what we are doing now, we can then introduce other things and we'll be able to survive. Yeah. So I believe in focus and concentration. When you focus on something, you'll be able to achieve it. That's how can we manage to survive. Focus, concentration. Yes. Where's the microphone? If you have it, yeah, please go ahead. Hi, I'm Joanne Nilamte, a student of Ghana Institute of Journalism. Um, my first question is, as you said earlier, um, you had a plan B when you started the business, but there are people who have good jobs who like, might face business risk and they don't have plan, um, any plan B f after they face the risk. So after the risk, they just sit at home and then they become unemployed. Then my second question is that, were there any investors or you were your own investor? And also, do you face any struggles or challenges when you were starting the business? How many questions in one? <laughs> okay, so 
So um, if I get you right, I mean, I try to summarize things for myself so I wouldn't forget. Right. But what I realized in doing business over a period of time is that the reason why your business will fail is only two, only two, and just take it from me. If you have bad management, lack of, lack of management, good management, and lack of funds. This is, this is the only way where you can have all the funds. If, if a bad management, it will fail. You can have all the good managers. If you don't have money, your business will also grow. And so, and it's also difficult in this country where when you're a startup, nobody, no bank would want to, to look at you. I don't prefer to, I just want to give a basket full of ideas you can choose from. It depends also on the business that you are into. For me, the business we started, I mean, let me, in Ghana terms now, probably like a 2,000 could start the business. So we just go around, take a 2,000, probably that time around my salary, mm -hmm. and then we started a business. If you want to do business that... Uh, and this was needs, your own savings. Yeah, this is my salary. My salary. salary, yes. Mm -hmm. you know. So if you want to do a business that requires huge capital, you need to get that money. And it depends. You can get it from so many. In fact, these days, entrepreneurship is, is really everywhere. So people will be ready to help. But those times, I call friends and I take small money from here and all that. I'm honest enough, go back and pay. Mm -hmm. like this time you go and get another. I think the FFF principle still works. Friends, family, yeah. and what? So, Force. what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so basically, just look at um, management. And for me, I, my thinking was that management, you can start. You are starting your own business, so you, you can do the management bit of it. But when it comes to funds, that's where, if you don't have it, you don't have it. <laughs> you have to either fall on friends or the bank, and the bank will not give you or whatever. So you just have to know that. at a very high rate. Yeah, you so have to know what business you are into and what really you think you need for the business to, to, to uh, succeed. Okay. I think it's, it's a great point that you make, but... I always ask this question about whether you need money to start a business, and I get different answers. So what's your view on this? Um, it depends. I mean, when you're doing your MBA, you don't have straight answers. Everything depends. It depends on the business that you want to do. If you want to run a transport business and you don't have money to buy a car, you can't, you can't start it. But if you want to run a service business where you want to train people and you have a small place that you can just or get people to do a seminar for them. You don't need money to do that. You don't need that much money. Definitely you need some money, but it depends on the kind of business you're running. Um, if you want to do t um, something like what well, you are in here in TV3, I mean, you cannot start this business without money. You have to oh. buy all the gadgets and the equipment. But if I want to start cleaning business, and, and in my community, I decide to just paste some posters there about and get a couple of people calling me to come and do the business. So you have to analyze your business where and see whether you really need money. But you need some mo some money anyway. Obviously. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Please. My name is Sue Elizabeth Clenham, a student from Ghana Institute of Journalism. My question is oh, why the a, name a, Yumi? She's a journalist, yeah? <laughs> So Why please. the name Yumi? Anytime I buy Yumi, yeah. I have been looking at the name. Okay. Why the name Yumi, okay. not other names? Okay. And what's behind that name? Wow. Thank you. I, I, okay, I'll tell you why. Uh, but I'm happy you asked that. Uh, my daughter, this name is actually my daughter's name. My daughter is 16 years now. She's Association International. Um, her name is Yomigo. Yomigo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is like and, you mean you got. <laughs> and, anyway, <laughs> and, and in my language, it means woman of substance. The well, what language is that? I'm a Danwe. I'm a Kubo. Oh right. So it's like woman of substance. Oh, you are my amigo. Woman of substance. You amigo. Please don't ask me why. <laughs> so basically, what we did was to split the name into two. You have Yomigo. We said, okay, let's call the company Emigo. And we call the product Yumi, Yumi Yogurt. So that's what we have, Yumi Yogurt, and we have Emigo. Fantastic. And we did that because we started this whole business when we gave birth to her and all the struggle and all that. And we decided, hey, let's, let's use her name to start. This is great stuff. <laughs> great stuff. 
which is good, good inspiration right there. Um, so yes, you derive you know the, the motivation from the experiences, both good and bad, and, and you know make the most out of it. They say if they give you lemons, you make what lemonade out of it. Yes, and interest please. and interestingly, it sounds like yummy, and delicious. Yeah. So that's what's going on. Great. <laughs> Name. Okay, I, I think we've answered that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> any, 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 next, please. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Herbert from GIG. Please, when you were speaking, you said what made you go into business was the packaging. But what I know is most entrepreneurs go into businesses because of profit. By yours, you went into this because of the packaging because it wasn't packaged well. So, what advice would you give to people who want to go into entrepreneurship? Should it should money be the main reason why they should go into business? Uh, actually, uh, that was a challenge. It was a problem I identified. I, I, I can't be standing in line for a long time just to buy yogurt and drink, and I nearly missed my mid semester exams. You understand? So it was, that was a challenge. Then even as of the time, it didn't occur to me I was going to do my own business. I was like, I will pack, I will just send this to Accra and resell it. It was the Eureka moment for me. That was right. when it occurred to me that I want to. It wasn't that, that was not a trigger to let me go into business, but okay. that was a challenge that I identified. Yeah. Right, any more? Yes, please. Okay, I'm Ralph from GIJ. I want to ask if uh, the bank issues affected your business as um, last year and... You mean the collapse of the, the banks and microfinance institutions, did, did it impact your business? Everything is connected to everything. <laughs> 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 and so, I mean, that's the way it works. If you have money, you have enough money, you can sacrifice some to buy my product. But if you don't have money, you gauge the money and see, this mm. money won't buy this. So it's, it's affected it somehow, but not that significant. I see. Over the 15-year period that you've been in business, what are some of the challenges that you faced, you know, um, on the changing phases of the economy? And how have you dealt with it? You know, um, take us through briefly the period of transition as a startup into, you know, a full-blown business now. <sighs> For 15 years doing business, the challenges are many, and some of them on daily basis, some monthly, some yearly. But uh, as you read from my CV, uh, our company was selected by Stanford Seed, and then they gave us some training. So some of the things that we had, we have two strategies anyway, some transformation strategy and uh, optimization. And so we had a board. Right. We had a board that would present some of these challenges to them, and then they direct us. I mean, but mainly for us, because we want to expand, we want to transform, it was mainly, mainly financial. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge with finance is that we live in Accra where, I mean, the Bank of Ghana rules, yeah, give SMEs um, money. But we live in Accra where land issues are such that you don't have titles to your property. So you have a property, but you don't have a title. You go to the bank, the bank says, okay, I can only give you money when you have collateral. And so you realize that you don't, you won't get that money. And that's why I said to your answer, your question that it affected me somehow because the, the uh, savings and loan guys and the macro finance, they would risk a bit and give you some, some capital um, yeah. to, even though very expensive, you just manage with, with it. Uh -huh. So for us, it's, we have a very solid board um, and we have good management team. And like I said beginning, two things that will let a business collapse is lack of finance and lack of yeah. good management. Okay. But for us, mainly it has been finance. It has been finance. Yes. And, and it's still a challenge. It's still a challenge. Okay. I'll take the last two questions, please. Yes. Uh, please, okay. my name is Holland Swadonko from UG, Accra City Campus. Please, you said uh, you were a chemistry student who wants to come out as a pharmacist. But then, you don't have any business field. You don't have any business ideas to okay. how to set a business. So, what were, who assisted you to, uh, as to how to set a business? I want to know. All right. Well, nice. okay. My name is Abdel Kabel, student of Ghana Institute of Journalism. Uh, my question is, if someone wants to apply in your, uh, at, in your business, does the person need a certain qualification to be in it? And also... Uh, I think as one will be good. A student? I beg you. Oh, please. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Can you let's, let's so briefly answer those With two. your question, um, can you remind me? Um, 
you didn't have any business background, but you wanted to you get into business. How how did anyone I, I, help I you? I want to I, mean, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you here today listening to this program, because some of the things that I did that really helped me is to attend seminars like this. I mean, on campus they organize seminars. Business. Entrepreneurship those days were not that of it, it wasn't like everywhere like it's these days. And so you go to seminars, you listen to programs, and it motivates. Because if you are a science guy or a pharmacist or a medical doctor, you are constant. You are just focused on your your profession. So this is where I got some of the ideas that I can I can do something on my own and see how it works. I mean, and again, in my, my your background also helps. I worked with my uncle when I was in Takradi as a lab scientist, mm -hmm. and I saw my I ran his business when he was out of the country for a while. Right. And so I saw how good mornings were coming in and things were going nice and, and all those things were part of my motivation to start my own business. Fantastic. The final question was on, no, your first question was on what? If uh, anyone wants to come into your business, does the person need a, a certain qualification? To qualification. Be we are a very unique company where almost everybody, probably only the, probably the chartered accountant that we have now, almost everybody that has come to, is working with us now, have no um, prior uh, experience from anywhere. From our lab scientists to the production manager to HR, we, we, you come, we, if you're sharp, we just recruit you, we, we onboard you, and you go for trainings and seminars and you learn on a job. So, but you must yeah. demonstrate some skill. Exactly. Yeah. Final words to them um, as we round up on TV, but we're going to still be live here. Yeah. Okay, so um, I just want to say that it's good to do business. Um, it's good to do business, and when you're getting the money, it's more interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea that you will aspire to do your own business. Uh, I want to congratulate you for choosing this time, spending time, energy, and effort to be here. But remember that you won't get it one day. And you won't get everything you need. You must have some trade-offs. You must spend some time. Now, information is all over these is do some research. You see, ideas are good. What the phones we have now, all the gadgets we have now with us was once a while somebody's idea. Sure. But today it's materialized. And so I just want to say that good ideas are good. Um, good ideas you search and you find. Right. So you research and try and start your own business. You fail anyway somehow. Right. If you fail, try again and you'll be successful. Try again and you'll be successful. Please put your hands together. <laughs> well, Steve, Steve, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Stephen Eko, CEO you. of uh, Emmy Go Ghana Limited, makers of Yomi Yogurt. Extremely grateful. He's been a captain for the month of February together with a wonderful audience of the Ghana Institute of Journalism and the University of Ghana, Legon City Campus. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Thank you, thank you so much. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you as always and for you, the thousands of audience as well out there on 3news.com, TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSTV Channel 279. Thank you, as always, for watching. I am Alfred Kansi. On behalf of the rest of the team, thank you so much. Make a date with us again next month. Good evening.